Alright, so this is the brand new Hornby Standard 2MT. It actually does exist, so... This is a relatively recent model. It's been in development for absolutely ages. It was first announced in 2020. Just to give you the brief, or try to keep it brief here, this was announced in 2020, and then it was delayed, and we didn't hear about it for a good number of years, up until this past summer. So, summer of 2023 to be precise, summer, spring, around that time. And then Hornby started showing off uh, decorated samples, well, production samples of the second batch that was announced uh, the year after uh, 2020, so 2021 obviously. And yeah, and it's finally here. Well, some of them. This is one of two. The rest of them should be arriving relatively soon here. So this is one from the 2020 batch. This is uh, 78047. Let me just zoom in here. It's actually a pretty decent model. It's actually made of die cast. It's got some heft to it. It's not super weighty, but it, it doesn't need to be, in my opinion. It's it's good enough. The lamp irons are a bit on the tall side on the running board, but that's that's fine, in my opinion. You don't get any screwling couplings, which is a shame. And I would say the most obvious thing about this model is, well, um, that's the topic of this video. So a lot of people, not a lot, but a majority, the majority, how about, let's, let's go with that. The majority of people out there, so a lot of us have been waiting for this model, right? The majority, some like it and some don't. Now, the reason why some don't like it is because it's not... <sighs> what's, what's the right way to say this? Uh, it's, what I'm, it's basically a backhanded compliment, what I'm about to say, but this 2MT, the Hornby Standard 2MT, this feels like a model that should have came out 10 years ago, in my opinion. So, that's a good thing. And a bad thing. The good thing about that is that it, it it feels quality. Like I'm pleased to say I've only had like one issue with this model. And the only issue is that when I got it, one of the buffers was loose in the box. But that was like the only quality problem I've got with this model. I, I haven't Nothing else is broken, nothing else is bent, there's absolutely no glue mark in sight. If I can just, you know, I've been turning it around for boredom, but also to, sh you know, show it off, basically. There's, like, not a single glue mark in sight. There's nothing bent, nothing broken, and I'm very pleased about that. This is how it should be. Now, the bad thing about me saying that this is a model that should have came out 10 years ago is well it's it's already dated so we've already got the previous coupling drawbar arrangement the old good old uh, wire and harness with the drawbar instead of the new uh, plug and play style that we've seen with the P2 and the Dugla Scotsman's or Double O, what it, I don't know, I don't care. Uh, the Scotsman's and even like the some of the more recent-ish models. Like I know some of the models, previous models have been upgraded. I know the W1 of all things has been upgraded to have the plug and play style connection. I believe the A4 is going to be upgraded as well. But I'm not sure about any other locomotives. I'm not sure about things like Britannia's or Duchess's or Princess Royal's. I'm not entirely sure about those particular models. It's mainly the LNER stuff, surprise, surprise. So, maybe we'll see. And that's just one thing. Another thing that I guess I can see why people are upset about this is because, well, it, there's nothing really 
innovative about it. It's very basic. It's a very basic model, which, in my opinion, to to be honest, personally, I don't see anything wrong with that. I I'd much rather have run-of-the-mill models like these with very little technological mumbo jumbo fancy features. <laughs> Again, going back to the turbo motive, if I've ever mentioned it, I don't think I have. But the turbo motive, one of the main things that put me off buying the turbo motive was not the price, it was the fact that it's got stupid lamps that are fixed in position and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. You can't take them off. You, the, the, you're, you're stuck with them, basically. You're stuck with the head code, the express head code. And the Black 5 is going to have it as well, which I'm even more put off by. So I'm definitely not buying the new Black 5 now. I was on the fence about it, but now I'm definitely not doing it now that I know it's got those stupid lamps. So, another thing. Uh, it I, I wasn't a massive fan of this feature, but I've, I've grown on it. The, the more that I've seen it on some of the more recent stuff, I've actually gotten used to it now. But the firebox glow is pretty much non-existent because it's not a feature on this model, which, eh, it, it's, it's whatever. Uh, personally, I don't care too much. I'll just say that. I Like I said, I didn't care about it. I rather, I didn't like it at first, but, hey, it is what it is. I've actually gotten used to it now, but seeing as the fact that the 2MT doesn't have it, it's understandable. I did hear something about them saying this model was going, they were going to go back and try and like retrofit it with like the firebox glow and stuff, but then that would have added more delays to this already delayed model, so yeah. And that brings me on to the other topic is the, 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 the delays basically. It, we saw decorated samples of these back in October 2020 for the virtual Great Electric Train Show. And then we heard nothing from them since. So, I'm not entirely sure what happened. I heard some, I, I heard a rumor saying that the tooling got damaged during a factory move. Which is plausible. But again, it's just a rumor. So, take it with a grain of salt. But those are my only gripes with this model, to be honest. It's it's pretty decent, like I said, it's a going back to the comment I made earlier, it feels like a model that should have came out ten years ago, which is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. So, so let me just briefly talk or ramble or whatever. So a criticism people have is all this pipe work here, all of it being painted. Now, on the real thing, yes, that it probably wouldn't have all been like this. It would have easily been dirty very quickly. But on like a preserved locomotive, even then, like some, sometimes the pipework is like polished to a very high degree. So some of this is actually going to get painted over because I'm going to turn this into uh, one of the Great Central 2MTs because I've got three of these models on order and I've got one of them already and I'm waiting on the other two and one of them is a green one. So anyway, that's a criticism that a lot of people have. They don't like it but personally I um, uh, I like it and I hate it at the same time. It doesn't bother me too much but looking at you know preserved locomotives it does help and it kind of does stand out a bit. It, it's a little too much because even the standard 4 10 wheeler it isn't, and even the Britannia and the clans, they're, they've all got painted pipe work like this, but it's not, it's nowhere near this. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I'll leave it at that. Like, at least they have, like, variation. Like, some have white uh, in the pipe work and stuff, but it's just all one color, which, meh. I mean, it doesn't bother me that much. The window screens here, those are surprisingly intact. I'm surprised they haven't broken off. And to be honest, I'd rather have those in a detail bag. I'm going to be completely honest. You do get sprung buffers. Let me just... giant thumb. Sprung buffers. Cool. You also have a sliding roof vent. Opens and closes. The coal load is removable, but I'm not going to take it out 
yet because I, yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> I'm not too comfortable with that, but, uh, so, it's a pretty decent model, this video, this video is just basically me giving my, you know, opinions on it, trying to be, trying to have like a cut down format of my usual rambles, yeah, it's, it's pretty decent, I would recommend it, however, the price I understand will put like a lot of people off because this thing, it's a tiny little mogul and it's it's very expensive for what it is. And I'm not one that whinges about price like 90% of other people out there. But I mean, I paid I got this from TMC and I paid the original the original price, which I believe was like 100 162 pounds. That was the original price before Hornby hiked it up now to like 198 98 I think 96. Somewhere around there, so I managed to get a pre-order in because I had one with Hattons. Hattons canceled it during that whole <laughs> issue from way back when. So I went to TMC, placed a pre-order in with TMC, and yeah, got it at the original price at 162, which great service from them, by the way. Detail pack, uh, you get. You don't get, well I say you don't get much, you get quite a lot. You get your brake rigging, you get a uh, NEM coupling for the front, you get your cylinder drain cock, some steps, uh, you get a snow plow. Don't know why. Uh, I, I guess if you want to like reenact your locomotives being stuck in snow drifts, then sure, go ahead. But yeah, that's, that's basically it. Like I said, no screw link coupling, which is a, in my opinion a big shame. But, hey, it could be worse. could have stupid lamps that <laughs> could be permanently stuck to the, to the model. Cab detail is... It's there. It's okay. It's it's not bad. As you can see, it's painted. I'll try and get a better picture of it later on. The socket, if you're curious, is a 8-pin socket. And then there's people like whinging about why didn't they upgrade it to like 21-pin. Well, look at this tender. There's no way that you're getting a 21-pin socket in there, especially if they've crammed it all the way back here like they normally do. So, I don't know. There's no way you're getting a 21-pin socket in that thing. The Bachman Ivet 2MT, that thing is... It's just as bad. And that brings me to another thing. I see so many comparisons between this and the, I the Bachman Ivet 2MT. There's no comparison to be honest. It's it's they're two different prototypes and It clearly shows because th this is like I said This is a model that should have came out ten years ago, or at least it has that feel The Bachman Ivet 2MT the Ivet 2MT I should state Because people get these things confused and it's not that damn hard So there's really no comparison Bachman's Ivet 2MT is like well over 15 years old and that shows however it still holds up in my opinion <sighs> right <laughs> so I'm sorry about that but that's just a pet peeve of mine and there's no comparison in my opinion that you should not be comparing this model and the Ivet 2MT because they're two different prototypes but Having said that, I believe that's all I've wanted to state. Oh, uh, running qualities. Might as well talk about that as well. This thing is absolutely fantastic as far as it runs. Um, I'm not sure what the main deal, the issue is, but like one of the... Is it's, a, it's a slight issue. It's not really an issue, but it's something I've noticed is it's very slow. For whatever reason, like, I'll put up a clip of it running on the rolling road, but that'll be like 50%, and it will, it'll look like it's running around at like 30% on the controller, but it's really at 50%, so I don't know if it's the motor or if it's the gearing. I'm not entirely sure, it just looks really slow. But it, it's, it's, it's so smooth and quiet, and that's, it, it's amazing, honestly running wise apart from that little issue and then one thing it's a stupid little thing but one thing that really pleases me and the, the 9f is like this as well the cent the eccentric rod actually moves it's not stationary like 90 percent of other hornby locomotives steam locomotives that is 
So I don't know. That that just uh like I'm I'm sorry. I'm gushing over this thing because I love it so much. It's been a long it's it's been a long wait, and I'm so glad it's here. And in my opinion, it, it's worth the wait. The only I just noticed this. The only other issue I have, and I've seen this on other models, other people's models, is like the uh, the spur like the bit of residue from like cutting it off the sprue like here on the steam pipes I think the chimney has it as well let me yep the chimney has it so those are like the only the on, they're on, those are the only issues I have so quality wise it could be a little better but yeah it's it's fantastic it's it's oh I love it so much <laughs> I really wish they I hope they don't do what they did with the clan and I hope they like don't make a certain amount of these and then they don't make them ever again I really hope they don't do that because that would be a crying shame in my opinion because this is probably one of their one of the best BR standards to come out from Hornby like the Britannia the Britannia and the clan they're fine the standard 4 10 wheeler the mm, mm. <laughs> it's it's fine but the quality it's not great on that thing I've seen so many broken examples and let's not even get started about the Duke of Gloucester, because that thing, oh boy, uh, they need to retool that. But yeah, this is probably one of the the best BR standards to come out of Hornby in a very long time. I, I dare I say it, I want them to produce the tank engine now. I want them to produce the little standard uh, standard two tank now, because they they kind of got half of it. They got the boiler, and they've got they basically got the chassis. They just need to attach another truck, uh, another truck at the end. You know, get rid of the tender, add a bunker, add some tanks, and boom, there's your uh, tank engine. <laughs> Essentially, I mean, that's not how hard, I would say how hard could it be because the Bluebell is doing it, but I mean, I know tooling and all that. It's usually a rather expensive affair. So, yeah, that's the end of this video. I believe I've discussed a lot of what I had in mind. So, I will actually put up some running clips of it on the wrong road. Unfortunately, I'm not going to put it up on the, have any clips of it on the temporary layout, because like I said in one of my previous videos, I really, I really don't feel like setting it up again. I put it up for a reason, and I really don't feel like setting it up again. But, who knows, maybe in the future I will. But yeah, the Hornby Standard 2MT, fantastic little bit of kit. I'm so glad it's here. It's finally here after what feels like ages and yeah I, I I'm currently waiting for my other two so videos on those maybe possibly because I'm gonna turn two of them into the this one and another black one I'm turning into the great central twins and then the green one I've got in order is gonna be one of the Midland and Great Western locomotives so yeah, so videos on those in the future, maybe, possibly, who knows. But yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.